Hi, everyone. Welcome to Save the Date, your dating survival guide from Coffee Meets Bagel. This is Down, your host and CNB's chief dating officer. Each episode, I invite a dating expert to explore what it takes to go on great dates and ultimately find a great relationship. Today, I'm joined by Kimmy Salter, a confidence therapist, authentic dating strategist, and host of a hit podcast called The Charisma Quotient. And today, we're going to talk about drum roll. I'm so excited. <laughs> Flirting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited because actually this is not such a not so secretive way for me to actually get better at flirting. I'm in a relationship, but I think it doesn't matter if you're dating or in a relationship, you can always get better at flirting to like spice up um, your dating life or your, you know, your relationship. So super excited. And Kimmy is the perfect person because Kimmy runs a bunch of flirting workshop, um, including the one, um, you know, I think you actually ran a whole immersion class like this past weekend. Yes. I mean, right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was super fun. <laughs> now. And I'm very passionate about this topic. So thank you for having me on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited to learn more. And um, this is, this is a skill that I think some of us, uh, are, you know, some of us are good at, but we can always get better. And some of us just have, have no idea how to actually even start. Right. Um, so thank you so much for being on the show. Oh my gosh. Thank you. And I thought it was so cute how you said, and we're going to talk about flirting and like that, <laughs> just like the smile and the way you said it. I think, you know, the word flirting has such reaction mm. for people. You know, some people are, can't even say it out loud. You know, some people have like a pit in their stomach when they talk about it. But the reality is, is this is a skill that everybody should know and embrace and have fun with because yeah. to me, that's what makes or breaks that attraction factor that magnetic right. energy that just draws people to you right right yeah so let's talk about what flirting is first because I, I think it could mean different things to different people and uh which is why for some of us like feels really awkward and hard or some of us like it feels like negative like flirting sounds like manipulative or like it's like a acting that I have to do in order to get someone to like me or something and so how would you define what flirting is yeah, you know, it's funny because when I do my flirt workshops and I ask people, you know, what what are some of the fears or excuses you have around, mm -hmm. you know, not flirting? That's exactly what you said. Like people have all these attachments, you know, mm -hmm. and fears and things that they associate with what, you know, flirting is all about. I mean, some people think it's like twirling the hair and making googly <laughs> eyes and, you know, being Marilyn Monroe and, you know, like showing cleavage or, you know, and by the way, I teach men this too. And, you know, it's all about, um, I have a little bit different like take on flirting that I think mm -hmm. might help this discussion. And, um, if you don't mind, I actually like to start with telling my story. And yeah, please do it because it really, um, I always like to throw myself under the bus. Because <laughs> I was just like, you know, like I, I know I seriously, because I, I think that, you know, sometimes people will look at, oh, well, she's a flirting and dating expert and all of that. But the reality is, is that I was just like you, like I had to learn the hard way mm. and my backstory is that I, I was once married, like in a land far, far away named Chicago. And I <laughs> lived this very traditional life. And here I was like, I was a therapist for many, many years. I was, you know, um, taking care of my, my young children. I had the picket fence and the dog, very traditional life as, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. And um, until one day we all picked up and we moved across the country here to La La Land. And we, and we did what all the other people people here did we got a divorce and I'm just <laughs> obviously right like issues in this fairy tale but you can imagine like that's when the record stopped and mm. my life as I knew it completely went away and vanished and mm. here I am looking in the mirror and I see this frumpy mom wearing all black. I still had my nursing bras on. Mind mm. you, I was not nursing any longer. <laughs> just, just shows you how like stuck I am, right? So I'm stuck in my mindset. I'm stuck in my clothes. And now I have to go out there and like start flirting with men. What? You know, right. like the whole, oh my God. 
Right. And so all the things that you just talked about, I remember feeling it's like, I don't even know what to do with these aliens, AKA men, you know, like, (laughs) I don't know how to talk to them. I don't know how to do the googly eyes. And quite honestly, I, my, my confidence was completely shot. That's why I like mm. really talking about confidence because so much of confidence has to do with how we show up, and, but mostly it's experience. And I, at that time, I, I had no experience, you know? Yeah, like, you haven't, you yeah. haven't dated for so long. Exactly, exactly. So what happened to me, and this is what changed the entire course of my whole um, business and what I teach today is, I had all this therapy, I had counseling, I had great support system, but I still couldn't get out of my own way, so to speak. And Mm. I remember looking in the mirror and just hating what I saw. Like Mm. I just, this frumpy, like sad person that was wearing ginormous black clothes. And I just looked at them and I said, you know what, I'm going to go shopping. Mm. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go shopping. I hate my wardrobe, you know, and and one of the things that I I don't think I mentioned, I'm an image consultant as well. And so this is kind of what got me into the whole visual aspect, Mm. because that's a really important part of flirting is like being able to put yourself out there. Well, I realized my black clothes was keeping me invisible from the world, from men. It was keeping me safe. It was my cocoon, right? And and so when I went to the store, the personal shopper, she saw me like, and here I am. I think I'm like up-leveling myself. No, what am I doing? I'm picking all the same clothes again, black. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember like, I remember holding them in my arms and the woman just stops me and she says, ma'am, I really think you should try this on. And she Mm. holds up this red dress and it looked like three sizes too small. And I said, (laughs) that is, that's really sweet of you, but um, that's not my size. And that's really not my color. And she said, honey, that is your color. (laughs) It's your size. (laughs) Try it on. And I, I call it my red dress moment. And it really kind of has defined like who I am and where I start with people. Because at that moment, I decided after looking in the mirror, yeah, I'm going to try that dress on. Yeah. Try it on. I twirl around like Cinderella. Boom. There I was. Right. I mean, I love that story because thank you for sharing that, like such a personal story with our audience, because I mean, if you were able to get from where you were, like that in that, that, that like traditional, you know, mom, wife, and, and like not feeling great about yourself to where you're now being like, I'm, I'm sure you could have, you couldn't have imagined, right. That you would one day be a flirting dating slash dating coach. And that's remarkable. Like that tells me like anyone really literally anyone can actually uh, learn and get better at this art which is super encouraging. I love that you got the point of my story. <laughs> is that right? Like if I can do it, y'all, like anyone can do it because yeah, never in a million years would I have dreamed that this is what my career would have ended up in. And here's the thing that was really amazing for me and my journey and my experience is that when I went out into the world in my red dress, I really recognized how much I was missing, how, how Mm. many opportunities I was passing by because I was so inward, you know, with my clothes, with, with me looking down, not, not taking opportunity to see what men were even noticing me because I was scared. And so when I went out into the world with the red dress, I really had to get used to being seen. Mm. And it was a big lesson. And I really realize now that there's a symbiotic relationship between the outer and the inner when it comes to our confidence, when it comes to putting ourselves out there, you know, and that is why I flip the script now. You know, I know most experts work from the inside out. I now work from the outside in. So Mm. I work on body language. I work on the way you dress, the way you show up your first impressions, because that's, that's the fastest gateway into somebody's confidence. And I, and I learned from experience basically, you know, and I love like passing that on to other people. So when I hear women like yourself or anybody out there and men too, say, I, I don't know what to do. I hate flirting. I don't want to give the wrong impression. Like it goes on and on. There's so many fears, but to answer, that was a long winded answer to get to your original question is Uh what is flirting? This is what's so fascinating about it is that 
if you look in the definition, like the true definition of flirting, it says to behave as though you are attracted to someone without the serious intention of an outcome. Mm. Can you say that one more time? Can you say that one more time? Right. To behave as though you are attracted to someone without the serious intention of an outcome. Mm, Now, if mm -hmm. you think about it, all the excuses and fears that come up have to do with everybody being attached to the outcome. Mm. Oh, he must be married. Oh, he's not going to be interested. Oh, I want him to like me for me and not as a sexual object. I want him to like me for my intelligence. I don't know how I feel awkward. Like I literally have a list that goes on and on and on. When I do these workshops, I actually ask the, you know, the audience, whether it's virtual or in person, you know, what's your excuses. And I always have them always up on the screen. And and so what that means is these are common things, but flirting isn't supposed to be about anything, but the present to create a magnetic energy that just draws people to you. I believe flirting is being playful, is being Mm -hmm. open, you know? And so people who get all, you know, like kind of tripped up on that word, I invite you to really think about where the roots of your definition came from. Like, I know there's a lot of like cultural um, also kind of influences, right? Like if you grew up in a culture where that wasn't like cultivated or expected, or, you know, you didn't know anything about it. I mean, there's a culture where eye contact's not even appropriate. Like I, I went to um, Shanghai actually with one of my clients and you know, it was really good for me to see just the culture and how people relate and date. And it's not polite to make eye contact. Mm. Right. And so like, I think there's a lot of different nuances. And then we also, as a therapist, I know have some deep rooted things that might have to do with things that we experienced in the past that just kind of make us freeze. Right. So, but whatever that is, it's kind of recognizing that for yourself and kind of break the habit or the triggers that are in your brain. That's why I truly, that's why I call myself a strategist now Mm. is because I just believe it's about putting in different strategies that break old habits so that you get a different result and a story. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then you do it in repetition and flirting is the same way. Mm. I love that. I love the definition too. It's like, just don't, no attachment to serious outcome, just being in that moment, playful, without thinking of what is this going to do? What is going to lead me to like, you know, like without thinking about all those stuff, um, just kind of uh, expressing your, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, whatever quality that you enjoy or like are attracted about uh, this other person, you know, in a playful way, without without thinking about what is this going to have, like, what is this going to lead me to, you know, what's going to happen next? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, You know, a metaphor I like to think about, and this is this anybody can relate to. I mean, just watch kids, Mm. watch kids on a playground who are like four or five years old. (laughs) Like they don't think they don't have filters yet. So they don't think, oh, I shouldn't go over there and like ask little Johnny to um, play in the, in the, the playground. No, he looks really busy. Maybe I'll wait. No, they just go up. Hi, want to play? I like your bucket. Like, end of like that is how we should all be flirting children are flirting all the time yes Yes. (laughs) but you know the sad part as adults is we life happens right and so does experience and things and so we develop filters we develop filters that prevents us and makes us hesitate like when I did the uh, flirt workshop last, uh, actually it was two days ago, I, I have both men and women there and men come in and we do speed dating and we did some exercise. I mean, at the beginning, the women were so scared. And by the mm. end, everyone was laughing. I had them put costumes on, be really goofy. And men were saying, we love that. Like that mm. is so super attractive. And by the way, ladies like that too. Like we love a guy who's super playful and fun. So it really is being more present not getting weighed down by the past and also not getting ahead of it, being so caught up in the future and, and, and like checking our list off, you know, like, Oh, are you my guy? Are you my guy? Or (laughs) are you my woman? Are you my woman? You know, and really just saying, Hey, who are you? And let's play. Cause so much magic can happen from that. I love that. And and that also makes, takes the pressure off first of all. Right. And then also makes it easy. Cause when you think about flirting, like it, I guess because I I have a script as to what flirting is. um, I don't know where I picked it up, but I picked it up from somewhere that there's like 
certain things that I need to be doing, but really is, it's not about like, okay, I need to, there's step one, you know, do this step two. It, it's more actually like less thinking and yes. more reacting um, to in, in the moment. Like if I think, I don't know, like, oh, the, the suit looks great on this person. Just saying that, like, wow, you did th that, the, the color brown looks really great on you. Just kind of in the moment, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and I work with a lot of high achievers, right? And and now it's one of the things that like, while it serves people in business, it actually really can hurt you when it comes to flirting and dating because mm -hmm. everyone is thinking so much and trying to have, like you said, a script or goals around it. And if, and if people don't fit into the goals and you're trying to check off lists and you're thinking and thinking, like you're losing that moment. And what I do with my clients, actually, I, I have them create a mission statement. And most of in the mission statement is just for a three month chunk. And a lot of times in that mission, it is to learn how to flirt and have fun with everyone, like mm. period mm. that goes online, that goes for offline. Like I get into coffee meets bagel, just so you know, like I'll go in there and I'll look <laughs> at what the conversations are going. And I can't tell you how many times I see what I see is LinkedIn exchanges. Like people are just like Q and A, Q and A, Q and A. Like, oh my God, this is so boring. Like I'm bored watching this. <laughs> I can only imagine what the opposite sex, you know, find. So it's, it's amazing when you just, you know, put a little more fun and I, the techniques that I use, I have this whole like social engagement formula that I teach people how to get out of the factual talk and into mm -hmm. something that's more heartfelt storytelling and fun. Can we, can we, can you share a little bit about that? Cause that sounds like something that we like CMB daters could really benefit from just like a preview. No, you have to hire me. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> flirting we're flirting right now <laughs> I was just gonna say so I'm demonstrating with you like what you could do you know with everyone because I think that's like number one right I feel like we all get really caught up in answering questions at face value right so how long have you lived here oh five years how about you oh six years so what brought you here oh da 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 like and then it's just this like ping pong match that's going mm -hmm. back and forth. And I think one of the things that I teach people is don't be afraid of like answering questions with a question. Like the, for instance, the, the buzz kill a lot of times is, oh, so what do you do for a living? I, I always tell people stay away from that talk. Mm. They can go on your LinkedIn and, and see what you do for a living. Like that, that, that's something <laughs> that like literally you could just have a business meeting about. And the problem when women start talking about business, they get in their masculine energy and they lose the flirt appeal. And then men just kind of pontificate, you know, mm. and then they get caught in that rabbit hole of just like, so then it becomes this factual conversation. Right. And so if you then say, well, what do you think I do for a living? And then you play a guessing game like that's so much more fun. Right. And you, then you're also getting information on how you're coming across. Cause I always tell my clients, if someone guesses that you're an accountant or a librarian, like we really need to work. Right? Like, <laughs> like no one should be guessing that, you know, of anybody. So, um, you know, again, like just how you and I are having fun and laughing, like that's really what connects people with people. Mm. So the, the formula that I teach people, it's, it's actually four steps, but it's moving people from your head, which normal conversations start with into something that has more feeling and storytelling mm. and personal in nature. Like, cause again, like the factual conversations can end up going a really long time, but, and then it just dies. Yeah. Like that's why a lot of people don't get asked out or because like, where do you go from there? Yeah. But if someone feels that charisma, this is why my podcast is called the charisma quotient. I love charisma because charisma is something that is that energy that just draws people to you. And what's so awesome about charisma too, is that it's learned. Research says that no one is born charismatic, that actually it's something that is a behavior that is learned over, you know, and so that could be your environment. It could be like just a role model that you had. But what that also means is no matter what age, you can learn it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
Yeah. So those are some like conversational tricks and actually conversational tricks are one component of flirting. So that's like, I have this formula called SBC form flirt formula and Mm. the C part is conversations. Mm. So I have two other parts, the S and the, and the B and the S is paying attention to your style, of Mm. course. Mm -hmm. And then the B is your body language. So Mm. like when you focus on those three areas and like kind of dial it up or maybe plug into things that maybe you're not doing or things that you know that you need to practice, that's when it starts happening and you, you, you start you know, just really having fun. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Flirting is just fun. Yeah. 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 I love this. The, 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 the part that I'm really zooming in on is like having fun, revealing the playful side of you. Right. And I I do really believe that just universally everyone, because like children, we were all children at once. We were all playful at once. We knew how to be playful, but you know, life happened and we've, a lot of us forgot forgot how to be playful and so if we can tap into that our inner child childlike playfulness I think things will naturally just f- start flowing like I don't have to be thinking about okay let me let me how do I sound playful right <laughs> like I, it'll it'll just naturally exactly. come so how do we is there some exercises or things that you recommend your clients do so that we can start tapping back into that inner childlike playfulness because a lot of us forgot what that actually feels like. Yeah, that is such a good question. I mean, one thing that I recommend um, in preparation for like a date or going out is I call it get a date prep plan together. And it's Mm. almost like, you know, putting together a business plan or whatever, but what are some things that you can do in between your work self or your parent self to your dating self to prepare, to get out of your head, to get something that is more in your body. Mm. And I always recommend that it should be at least one hour. Mm. Because the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, especially now that we're Zoom dating, is that people are going right from a work Zoom meeting into a date. Oh, shoot, got a date. Click, click onto the next <laughs> Zoom room, you know? <laughs> like, and that's a problem because you're still in work energy and you still have the same costume on as work. And so I always recommend, you know, change your clothes, get a, a dating costume, as I call mm. it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, another thing that I tell people to do is get a playlist together of your favorite songs that make you feel sexy and fun and like just dance around you know yeah get Um, moving get moving like if you're a woman put your lingerie on and like look at yourself in the mirror and just like like embrace your body and just you know it's it's all about getting out of your head and and just being fun and playful Mm. it could be just watching funny youtube videos you know that Mm -hmm. make you laugh that get you into that like you know, playful state, or maybe you have a friend who's really funny and you talk to that person, you know, during, whatever it is for you, everyone has something different. So I, that's like kind of the first step. And then, you know, definitely always look and feel your best when you're showing up. First impressions are huge. And when you, when you're feeling sexy, that's when the other person is going to too. Mm. It is not about the other person. Everyone like, and that's why sometimes it backfires because people are too focused. Like, am I pretty enough for that person Mm. or am I hot enough for that girl? You know, whatever it is. But when you just focus on you and and say, yeah, I I got a good hair day. I'm feeling good. I like me in red, you know, Um, by the way, everyone needs to wear red at some point because um, research shows that, especially if you're a woman, men are highly attracted to red. So mm, that is a, really? flirt, a flirt style tip. Yes, ex- absolutely. Especially in the profile. I always have some, my people always have red somewhere so in their profile. Is it only for like heterosexual women that the research is like? That's yes. Yes, okay. exactly. And then men, um, they found that blue is the really good color for men and mm. it works with most men and that's attractive. Mm. So, um, so yeah, like, like put some intention with what you're wearing and how you're putting yourself out there because mm-hmm. what, it, this is crazy. It only takes seven seconds now to make a first impression. And within that seven seconds, what research says is that the brain is going so fast that people are making judgments and assumptions on only two things. 
what you're wearing and your body language. That's it. Mm. Mm-hmm. which is amazing. And, and, you know, I can just see some eyes rolling already. Like, oh, I'm not going to change me for, you know, if the person doesn't like me for me, then forget it. I'm not going to change. This is not about changing who you are. It's about marketing yourself. So someone gets to know who you are. It's turning your cab light on. Yeah. For those of you um, too young to know what a cab is before Uber, there were these <laughs> yellow cars that went around and had <laughs> That had the light on. And when the light goes on, it means I'm open for business. Once upon a time. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I I really want to emphasize that because, yeah, it's not really about changing who you are. It's about it's first impression really is actually first impression could have nothing to do with who we are really. Right. Like it's it's a seven second thing is that how can anyone know who you are in in the first seven seconds or even two seconds? And I think it's about changing the that you know making impact in the first impression like first two to seven seconds of meeting somebody so that the you have an opportunity to actually really get to know each other and to really let the other person who you really are because if the first impression is off we're not good there's not going to be an opportunity to actually really get to know each other and like forget like you know forget letting them know who you really are right because the the next meeting is not going to happen that's exactly right. I have um, a really cute story around that. Oh, I have many stories, but one that comes to mind around this is I um, coached a woman to be like the best flirt ever. Mm-hmm. And then she went back home and she became almost like the best flirt in her little social circle. <laughs> okay. And this was a woman who was painfully shy, mm-hmm. who like, never would put herself out there, was very target specific and who she would smile with. And who. so anyway, she got the drill down, right, is to create fun and magnetism everywhere she goes. So she was at a bar once and she was just floating around, you know, having her cab light on, smiling, having so much fun, not really caring or getting attached to the outcome. And she looked hot, you know, this is how she was reporting it to me. And she said, the most amazing thing happened to me tonight. I said, so what happened? She's like, well, you know, everybody I was flirting with, I wasn't interested in, but I was just having so much fun. And Mm. then at the end of the night, this, this gentleman came up to me and he said, I hope you don't find this weird or creepy. He said, I just, I I just had to come and say, hi, I I was noticing you and I loved your energy. And I I just want to say it was so refreshing to see someone so happy and just, really normal. Like it wasn't creepy at all. That guy ended up being her boyfriend. Oh, wow. That's such a cute story. Right. Like you never know who's noticing you. That's, that's why, like, I think we've all become in our little shells and now with COVID it's even worse. Like people, people are hiding behind their masks. Literally like people are avoiding eye contact. Like the mask does not cover our eyes. People (laughs) like, you know, like we are supposed to still connect with everyone. And a beautiful opportunity to like kind of open up your blinders and look around because you just never know you just right never know. and then also tells me you really can flirt with anyone like you you don't yes. have to be flirting with somebody that you're like oh my god I'm like so into this person right because it, it going back to kind of what we were saying it really is about bringing out your playfulness and um, just being in the moment and getting out of your thinking head and then being in your body and just kind of re- uh, dancing with, with whatever is coming at you and getting, getting in touch with our inner ch- childhood, like kind of playfulness. So that we can do it with anyone. And, um, you know, who knows, like this, th- like this cute story that you just shared, like somebody kind of notices you and something, but not attached, to, could happen, but not being attached right. to the outcome. Yeah, no. And, and to your point, I mean, I I always encourage people to talk to like old men, old ladies, dogs, babies, you know, married folks, like you just don't know. I was coaching somebody else when she was talking to this married guy and she almost like had a heart attack. She's like, Kim, I'm not interested in him. And he, he's married. I said, you're, you're getting too ahead of it. Like we're just here to have a good time and connect with a good person. You know, we had so much fun and he was hilarious. He was from New Zealand and we're laughing. And, and in the middle of the conversation, he's like, are one of you single by any chance? I'm like, yeah, my, (laughs) my friend. And he said, I am so happy that you said that because I actually have a friend who I think would really like you, meaning my client. Mm -hmm. And later that night we met up with them 
and he brought the friend and that friend was super gorgeous to my client and they hit it <laughs> off and they ended up dating. That's, like, that's awesome. what I'm saying. Like you just never know. Right, right, right. And also like, I think it's a, this, it, it could sound kind of oxymoron, but for those of us, especially who are not used to being in touch with their playfulness and just kind of being in our head all the time, it takes yeah. practice, right? It takes practice. We're not going to be good at this right away. Um, and so, you know, whether it's taking an hour to really like get into that playful, playful mood, like you have to put in the time to practice. And I think it's good to be practicing it with like married folks and, you know, whatever, like some, you know, low stake folks, because once you actually come across somebody that you really like, you're going to freeze and it's going to be harder to actually be, be in my body. Right. Cause now I'm like even more worried about how am I going to yes. come across and blah, 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 blah. So I think it's good practice to actually be like flirting in the mm -hmm. definition of like what Kimmy just shared with whoever, because then it's you, you, it's like automatic almost. Absolutely. I, and I like the, how you recap that. Cause it made me um, think of another point that I wanted to make is that besides the repetition, I teach people to gamify it. You know, mm. like if it's really something that's nerve wracking for you, like I know a lot of people have a hard time with eye contact. Like I just throw that out there because it's something simple that you can do. So for instance, if that is hard for you, say, okay, for the next week, I'm going to make eye contact with three people each day when I am out and about. And then the next week up the ante, make eye contact and then, then, you know, say hi, you know, whatever it is. And like, keep layering it because mm -hmm. again, it goes back to what I was saying before about confidence. Confidence is, is simply experience. And the reason why we don't feel confident or we we're getting anxious because we haven't had positive exposure or validation around it. So we're feeling nervous. I mean, it's just like starting a new job, right? Like when we all started a new job, we all were nervous until you do it over and over and over again. I can do it with your eyes closed. <laughs> so I believe flirting is the same exact thing. And I, and that's evidenced by so many people that I've done my wing girl sessions with my virtual sessions, my coaching, and, you know, people get so good at it. They, ha they're having so much fun. I almost like create monsters. They're like, Kim, <laughs> my family, my friends, and they don't know what happened to me. <laughs> Like, what'd you do to me? You know, so That's awesome. it can happen. It can happen to you That's all awesome. too. Um, I want to go back to the, the SBC of the, so then S is a style, B is a body language and C is a conversation. Uh, just quickly on body language, you just mentioned eye contact, which is really important. Um, and besides, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing like you know, making sure that there is an eye contact with the whoever you're engaging with, because if you're looking away and whatever, like the, the person might be thinking like you're distracted, you're not really interested in whatever else. Is there, are there any other things about body language that we should be, um, we should be aware of? Yeah. You know, there's so many, when I teach people like in a more of a workshop setting, I, I kind of go over the different zones, right? Because mm -hmm. there's different parts of your body and different like things to think about. What's interesting about body language is that 93% of, you know, kind of that communication that you're sending out there is nonverbal. And mm. that actually includes your tonality and your voice. Mm. So if you tend to be a soft talker, or you just kind of talk monotone like this, or, you know, anything that has like an inflection that might be off, people will make, imp you know, their kind of impression about you. So there's a lot of different nuances with body language, but I always start with the face because I think the face is the easiest to practice. Mm -hmm. And especially since we're doing so many like video dates right, right. now um, to, you know, so say you're on video eye contact, even like even practicing looking in the camera because not everybody looks in the camera. Like I'm looking in the camera at you right now, but if I go like this and look at you here, I, I look like I'm not looking at you, but right. I think I'm looking at you. You know, like there's <laughs> different things. So I mean, video and in person, there's different things you can practice. Mm -mm -mm. Smiling is one of the biggest things. And you know, if you're a woman, men tell me this all the time is that, you know, they're just, they just want to know that you're not going to bite, that you're approachable that, and, and there's so many like RBFs out there. I don't know if I can say resting bitch face, but I just, 
but I'm just going to say it because that's, that's a real thing. Like everybody has a frown on their face and it's not that that we are like mean. It's just that a lot of times we're thinking we're busy, we're in our phones, but when you, when you just smile, it, 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 there's a physiological response, even with smiling that makes the other person smile and signal, Hey, I'm friendly. I'm warm. I don't bite. Come, come hither, <laughs> come talk. Right. So that's another thing. Um, and that's so for the, both genders, right? Smiling. Both is like, genders. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, now with men, with men, they can do a little, a little smirk, you know, kind okay. of does that. And they'll like raise their eyebrows. That means, and did you know, men will flare their nostrils if they're, um, if they're interested, but this oh, is, I didn't know that. Like, yeah, there's actually, um, some things that happen subconsciously that, you know, we're not even aware. And like women's, um, eyes dilate too, like when oh. they're attracted to men, like there's all these little things and nuances, but things that you can do on purpose and practice, you know, the smiling and the eye contact is great. Um, also like cocking the head a little bit, like when mm. you're a woman, mm. like when I do that, I'm, you know, you can see I'm kind of flirting with you. <laughs> um, and also, you know, the body, I, I would say overall, and this is both for men and women, just relaxing the body. You know, a lot of people are very tense or they don't know what to do with their arms, you know? And, and so not only posture, but also just slowing down, right? Right. Relaxing right. the body, slowing down. We're going so fast people like we are. And I see this, like when I have done my wing girl sessions, I was with a woman and she was like racing through the hotel. I'm like, where are you going? going like you just <laughs> missed all these men checking you out she's like oh well I, I thought we had to get to the bar to flirt I said okay in your agenda to go get to the bar to flirt you just missed opportunity to flirt mm -hmm. <laughs> so just like think about that like it's not so compartmentalized like now I'm gonna turn it on it's a way of life it's a way of right. really relaxing into it and that means your body yeah yeah I also heard that like uh you know, part of flirting is just kind of making sure that you're engaged, right? Because like, mm -hmm. if you are not engaged, or if you kind of signal that you're not engaged, like distracted, again, like the other person's now start going to think that you're not really in here. Um, and so like something like leaning in, like when you're having conversation, like that also, if you feel comfortable, um, like kind of narrowing the distance, the physical distance between the two person, like that creates yeah. a little bit of sense of intimacy. Yes, that is, I call that proximity. Yeah. What I teach people, and it's been a little bit difficult with social distancing, right, obviously, right, like right. as we get back to normal, hopefully we can get back to that. But yeah, like one of the good things, well, when I teach people to like walk into a room, it's just taking kind of the survey of the land and seeing where the people are. I think another mistake people make is they'll place themselves in the corner of the restaurant when all the action's happening at the bar, for instance, mm. you know? And so like, where can you put your body so that you're in proximity to people to meet, you know? So that's number one, but also when you're on a date, you're exactly right. Like I, I, I'd much rather have like a sushi bar setting where you're sitting side by side than like across from one another. Mm. Cause like being close to that person, it does give that signal, the warmth. And if you're, um, if you're okay with touch, having those like soft touches, you know, as you're talking to the person, as you're getting to know them, that signals that you're interested. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's another, um, stance that I, like if you're at a party, say, um, keeping your, um, I, I call it like a, a stance that's a V. So you're like shoulder to shoulder where you're mm. out still a little bit, but you're connecting with your, um, with your arm, that is also a nice way to kind of be more intimate and cozy rather than really far apart and looking at each other, you know, like head on, that's more an intimidating kind of posture. Mm. So when you can soften it and it feels safer and more romantic when you just bring it in a little bit. Right, right, right. How do you, um, so, so going back to the, and I'll, I'll kind of bring, I want to go back to the definition of flirting. I'll bring it back to this, like um, this particular topic that we're talking about, like, how do we actually, um, create intimacy and like, get people to know that you kind of, you kind of want them, like, 
so the the definition that you shared was there was the playfulness aspect and not getting attached to the outcome and there's in the beginning there is like what you said is like um making sure that you the other person you're attracted to the other person or something like that what was the definition Oh, you mean the definition of flirting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to behave as though you're attracted to right. someone. Right, right, right. Yeah. So to, to behave as though you're attracted mm -hmm. to someone. So that th th that's a separate element than I mean, playfulness that I think is also important, like making, you know, you just it's kind of like allowing them to know that you're sort of interested, right, in a playful way. Exactly. Like I'll give you, for instance, um, one of the things that I often like to do in um, – you know, my workshops is do a real date in front of everybody. Like okay. we did that this weekend and I had two people date. They didn't know each other. I put them like on screen, you know, I pinned them and we all just watched like voyeurs. <laughs> just kind of, we had our popcorn and we watched. No pressure. Um, yeah, and no pressure, no pressure. But you know, what they did was actually really, really common. And what I see happen a lot with people or how they report, you know, dates happening is that there was this, just kind of like ping pong match going back and forth. And it was nice and it was comfortable. It wasn't that it was a bad date by any means. And both parties actually said they felt comfortable with one another. But what happened is that there wasn't there wasn't the attraction factor that happened. Mm -hmm. And I believe mm -hmm. it was because there was no flirting. Mm -hmm. You know, they were nice. They were comfortable. They were, were beautiful people just talking to each other on nice topics. But, you know, and, and the man even backed me up. I said, you know, if a man is not getting assurance or signals that a woman is interested, like he doesn't want to overstep his bounds. He doesn't, like a good guy doesn't want to, you know, be creepy or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. here's the thing. I, I believe that both men and women have the responsibility of approachability and flirting. Like we, mm. it, it's not just the man's job and it's not the woman's job to just, you know, say, well, you know, he needs to be an alpha male and like, you know, kind of court me. Mm -hmm. like we both have to allow that like kind of juiciness to happen. And I feel like a lot of times women are slow to warm up on that. Like they have their guard up. They're not trusting. They're going to see who they're going to turn it on to, you know, like you're not going to hurt me again, or, you know, whatever, like kind of baggage or things that we have in our mind about it. But with that, we're actually creating a barrier, mm. you know? And so then a guy doesn't feel that chemistry or he doesn't think that, you know, basically you like him. And, and so then we're at a stalemate, like nobody's really like finding each other attractive. So when we kind of let go of all those, you know, fears and, and baggage, if you will, and just be present, like you were saying, really be present with that person. And what can you do to just connect? And I give two C words for that. If you work on being curious about the person mm. and really just connecting with your heart, with your mind, with your body, it's amazing what kind of connections you can make. Like at that workshop this past weekend, they, everyone admitted it, you know, when they were first on there, they were getting kind of nervous. Everyone was judging everyone. But then when they did the speed dating and they did all the things I was teaching them, they're like, wow, like it really surprised me how much. I like that person or how great that conversation went. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, I think the more we can be present with it all and turning up those little nuances to be playful, to give some signals. If you're a woman, drop the hankies, as I say, and, and allow the guy to pick it up at the end of the date, you can choose whether or not to move on. But if you don't give that that person a chance you'll never see if there was a even possibilities there yeah yeah I I do agree with that I hear a lot like oh well we met but there was no chemistry oh yeah right that that's a very common feedback on a first date like oh yeah they were nice but there was no chemistry and I I do wonder when I when I hear that um if enough like playfulness and you know what we call flirting actually occurred and I totally agree with you I think in the, in the society that we live in right now, heteronormative society for, um, for we, we both, whatever gender we are, like we both bring baggages, right? Like I think guys are very cautious now about, you know, not wanting to be creepy. Yeah. Um, and so of course that stops them from, oh wait, maybe I shouldn't, they're in their head, right? And then, you know, mm -hmm. one month also from, from our own experiences, we're also in, in our heads. So that kind of stops us from being 
in our body and being playful, where we can just kind of say and express what's kind of was whatever's there for us. And if you're having a good time, right? And, and like, chances are there are things about the other person that you really like, that you can express in a playful way, which would kind of like, um, bring up that uh, chemistry level. And so I think that's like a really important for us to be aware of. Um, you said two C's, one is curious. And what was the second one? Connecting. Connecting, Connecting okay. and curiosity. Yeah. I actually have this um, chemistry analysis that I do with people. And when they go on dates, I have them actually rate and define the four domains of chemistry. And it's fascinating because I think a lot of times people don't pay attention to those things that, that make up chemistry. I think we just all think about the physical part of the sexual part, but there's so much more that gets us attractive to people. And mm -hmm. when we are more in tune with that, it, it's really magical. And the other thing I want to say is around that playfulness is that I think we have a tendency also to be more polite and, you know, like when we're answering questions, we, we think that we just have to answer them and then ping pong it back as another question. But sometimes the most fun and playful interaction are the ones that make no sense. <laughs> like are the ones that are like nonsensical, you know, and have nothing to do with nothing because at the end of the day, it's not what, you know, it's how a person feels mm -hmm. end of story. That's the, it, it, the, the, I didn't have chemistry has to do with the feeling. Yeah. And so I do a lot of work on emotional intelligence. That's kind of like the therapist in me and like helping people really be more authentic and sharing and being kind of playful with that. So, you know, it's like me telling my story in the beginning of this podcast. Like, I, I think that's super important to tell stories and, and let you know where I come from rather than just me, you know, kind of spewing a bunch of facts out. Like, you feel something from that person and a date is the same way. Um, so at that mock date that we did over the weekend, I'll give you an example. She had a, like a really cute, um, background in zoom. Like it was some sort of Island. Right. And so he did a great job. He's like, Oh, it looks like you're somewhere really fun and, and cool. And she's like, Oh yeah. She's like, this is my, my zoom background. Like she, it, she kind of killed it. Like he was trying to like, you know, so, so he's like, oh yeah. She's like, yeah, yeah. This is just one of those green screen. And like, no, no. Like I wanted to go eh, like what not to do. Like, I'm like, just go there with him. Yeah. Like where's your red bikini to put on and, and have fun with it. Like, yeah, I'm in Barbados right now. You want to join me? Like, those are the fun things that like make a guy go, Hmm, you know, and the guy even said, had you done that? He's like, I would have found that super fun and attractive. Mm, mm, right? mm, mm. So, Yeah. What a great example. Thank you so much for sharing that. So as we, as all the listeners like now, like got so many great tips and as we embark on this, like practicing actually, and putting things into action, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of um, fumbling going on. Right. And so any words of um, wisdom you could share as we start, uh, you know, taking this journey on, uh, you know, I'm sure some, some, maybe some of the outcomes, even though we try not to get attached to outcomes might be discouraging. Like I said something in like flat, no reaction or something like that. Right, so right. Oh. <laughs> anything you could help us uh, uh, deal with those kind of uh, fumbling things that probably yeah. will happen so that we can continue to actually like work on it. Well, the first thing I'll say is expect the bumblings, expect mm -hmm. um, what you're thinking is rejection, but I'd invite you to actually um, redefine the word rejection because rejection is the number one thing that we're all fearing, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at it as experience and say, okay, well, that didn't work. I'll try it again. And by the way, that person just may not be your people. Like instead of taking it in and taking yourself so seriously, if something doesn't work, oh, well, like I'll even say like, look, here I am a dating coach and I teach this stuff and I'll say things. And sometimes it doesn't land with people. I'll just call myself out right then and there. And I say, well, I, I guess I just really wanted to say hi. I guess that didn't work. I, I just wanted to say hi. Like, you know, don't forget about just being human. You know, mm -hmm. I think we're so caught up in being perfect and painting a certain picture and that, that, uh, that has, and this is just me being a therapist. That has a lot to do with some of our upbringing and things that we're, we've dealt with. Right. Um, 
but so that's the first thing is just redefine what you're thinking rejection is. And, and the only failure right now is doing nothing Mm. really, because if you're not doing anything, then you're just staying the same. You're flatlining and you're, you're already not doing anything. So why not do something? Because change doesn't happen when you're in a state of comfort. Change happens when you're uncomfortable. And so if you are uncomfortable and you're, and you're feeling that little thing in your stomach, that's good. Like go, go towards it, not away from it, because that's when you're going to start doing something different for yourself. And it's probably what you need to do. And the third thing I'll say around that is really like start small. It's so overwhelming to think about, oh my God, I got a flirt, you know, instead of just even saying that word out loud, say, oh, wow, like I'm going to. I'm just going to like, look around today, like practice, just embracing your environment, like start with those little wins. Cause they will add up to the bigger success. Mm-hmm. Love it. Thank you so much, Kimmy. I can't wait. I mean, today I'm going to try kind of making some time between my work and, you know, getting off of work, try to maybe listen to something, dance a little bit so I can, I can be in that playful zone and see kind of what happens. So I'm excited oh my to God, try I that. I love it. I want to hear what happens. <laughs> <laughs> do tell, do tell. Yeah, I will. Um, so I have a final question. I ask every Save the Date guest, what uh-huh. is the best dating advice you've ever received? Oh, received. Mm-hmm. From, oh man. I would say the best advice that I received was to not expect too much. You know, Mm. it's like, I think, I think when I was first divorced, I I had all these like high expectations and I didn't have a lot of dating experience because I was a relationship girl, you know? So I'm really, that's one of my superpowers. I love helping like relationship oriented people just learn how to date without getting attached. It's the same thing because with that, when I learned to let go of the expectations and really just learn how to play and have fun and date, I really was dating myself and learning Mm. so much about what I wanted Mm. in a future relationship. And so, yeah, like it's almost like expect the unexpected Mm. kind of thing and Mm. not get so caught up in your agenda and your expectations. It is about remaining present. Mm. Love that. Uh, Kimmy, where can CMB listeners find you if they want to keep in touch with you, get more great tips, learn more about your workshops and all that? Well, I'm pretty much can be found anywhere you see Kimmy Seltzer. Like all my social media handles are at Kimmy Seltzer. It's K-I-M-M-Y-S-E-L-T-Z-E-R. My website is KimmySeltzer.com. Um, you can listen to my podcast, Charisma Quotient, and that's all over where you can um, find this beautiful podcast, Save the Date. Um, and yeah, like I, and I don't know if your um, listeners are interested, but I do have a free style guide um, for men and also a free body type guide for women. And it just teaches people about their body type and what clothes flatter their body type. So you can practice the first part of flirting and that's the S and that's the style because that's the easiest way to get started, you know, and it's the, and it's the fastest way to, you know, like feel that confidence, you know, just getting in like a new red shirt, for instance, or a new red dress. Um, and so you, I, I'm happy to give uh, your listeners the links. Oh, to great. That. Great. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much. So guys, like this is an awesome opportunity to start doing something different. And like, uh, like Kimmy mentioned, I, you know, how, how we feel about ourselves, like, which starts with like how we look right, um, could have a huge impact on our confidence level. Um, so let's, you know, let's not miss this opportunity. We'll have instructions on how you can actually um, get this freestyle guide on our show notes, uh, coffeemeetsbagel.com slash blog. Um, and also in the, on the notes, um, if you're listening on podcasts, on the notes on the podcast. So thank you so much for offering that. I'm really excited to check it out myself. Well- Oh my God. No, I thank you so much. And I also have like for women, obviously this is just more specific. I have an archetype quiz. Like if you want to know what dating archetype you are, I, I, I can definitely give that to your listeners. And I have an audio course also that you can get. It's like, Oh my God. Fun. How fun. Yeah. Thank you. You can hear me coach live these like dating archetypes and like, it's really more to help you understand that you're not alone and that these are common things that people deal with. And that you can overcome. So 
Great, great. Thank you so much, Kimmy, for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll see you in a um, few weeks.